2016, there was a Tesla S model in dual mode that had a fatal accident. The operator didn't fully appreciate their responsibility in controlling the car and having a responsibility to intervene and take control of the steering if the vehicle was about to crash. And the vehicle systems had been attempting to encourage the driver to grab the wheel, to pay attention, to stop goofing off. But the fact that the driver didn't fully appreciate his responsibility and the fact that the vehicle couldn't avoid a crash led to a fatality. And this led some people to advocate for more meaningful human control in automated driving systems and even vehicles with this dual mode capability or an autopilot that requires some human oversight. However, authors Guilio Macassi and Filippo Santonio De Sio in their December 2019 paper in Ethics and in Information Technology argue that this meaningful human control doesn't have to take the form of a live human operator. Instead, it can simply be the, the uh, responsiveness to reasons that are input from various human sources. And the title of the paper is Meaningful Human Control as Reason Responsiveness, the Case for Dual Mode Vehicles. So, Makasi and Santonio Di Sio, they make the case in the paper that reason responsiveness and meaningful human control can come about simply when a vehicle system takes into account various reasons that are input from various sources. And so they draw on action theory from philosophical, from uh, academic philosophy to say that, hey, if a, if a driving system can track, use a couple of different key concepts, concepts, one of them is tracking, if it can track and organize and balance and take into account the various reasons and prioritize the various reasons that a operator or various operator or various human sources input into the system, then it is uh, carrying out that meaningful human control. It is satisfying that. So if it were the case that you had an operator that said that they wanted to prioritize the beauty of the view of their drive, and then next in line, they wanted to prioritize safety and then kindness, fuel efficiency, and then timeliness last. They're happy to take as much time as, as the vehicle wants to as long as the drive is pretty and if they're relatively safe. And it's also the case that it, the operator and engineers and law lawmakers and such might also put the requirement in here that laws and regulations be prioritized at the very top, that no laws be broken. That could be, could be the case. And you might also have an operator or a manufacturer that wants to prioritize social norms and expectations. That could be right there with laws and regulations. But whatever the case, if the vehicle is able to balance and prioritize and appropriately respond to all these inputs, then it is accurately tracking those inputs and it, it is satisfying that meaningful human control. And so say, for example, you had an operator that prioritized the, the, the drive in this way. And they put the input in there that they wanted to go to the dog cave. Well, if, if that were the case, and they put in they wanted to go to the dog cave, then the vehicle could map out a path to the dog cave that might take a long time, but also have a beautiful view. So it's going to drive across the countryside. It's not going to break any laws while it's doing it. It's going to take a long time, but it's going to do all those things that the operator wanted it to do. And then it's going to take off. Down the path, get them there safely without breaking the law and seeing all that pretty stuff. Now, it, it could be the case that the operator instead wanted to prioritize fuel efficiency and speed. And they didn't want to go to the dog cave, instead, they wanted to go to gymnastics. Now, if that were the case, perhaps the route would be very fast, be very straightforward, be very fast. And so long as the vehicle did the things, that the operator asked it to do and it prioritized the various reasons and the values that the operator and the manufacturer, the engineer placed into the system, then it would be satisfying that reason responsiveness. So that's tracking. That's one of the key concepts used in the article. It just means it, it balances and prioritizes all those various uh, reasons. One of the other key concepts is tracing and the tracing has to do with moral responsibility. And the authors argue that to the extent that the operator appreciates the way that the driving system balances all of these priorities, and to the extent the operator also understands their responsibility in intervening if necessary and setting the system and uh, putting the various inputs in there to ensure the things are prioritized in the ways that they want, if that is satisfied, then the system is appropriately tracing and the human is appropriately tracing and appreciating their responsibility 
such that there won't be any responsibility or moral gaps. So that there, if there is an accident, the operator won't be able to say, well, I just didn't understand the way the system works and what I was supposed to do. And the engineer or the manufacturers wouldn't be able to say, well, we put in the fine print that they should have done this, even though we advertised that. To the extent everybody understands and appreciates their responsibility, the tracing criteria is being satisfied. The authors use a couple of case studies to help illustrate ways in which meaningful human control could possibly be overridden and at the same time satisfied. And they use the case of Lucy and John. And Lucy has a, a very expensive and a very fancy car, and it has the ability to drive fully autonomously. However, Lucy wants to drive her car herself. She wants to be able to take control of it. And it's a foggy evening, and she wants to get home. And so she takes control of her vehicle and she takes off and she's headed toward a crash site that she, she's unaware of and the system in the vehicle realizes this and it takes control and it swerves around the crash. And after it does, Lucy voluntarily, after it does, Lucy voluntarily pulls over to the side of the road and she gets out and she goes back to see what she can do to help to render aid. So that's Lucy. In the second scenario, John has a self-driving vehicle, and he wants it to drive itself. He's, he just wants to sit back and relax, and he wants to get home as quickly as possible. And as he's going down the exact same path that Lucy was, the self-driving vehicle sees the crash, it goes around it, and after it does, the vehicle starts to pull over and turn on its hazard flashers and tell John that he needs to put on his reflective vest so that he can render aid. But John says, I don't want to pull over. I want to go home. Forget those people. They'll be fine. Somebody else will take care of it. So he tries to force the vehicle to drive on home, but the vehicle forces John to pull over and turn on the flashers and call the emergency responders. So in these two cases, you can see ways in which meaningful human control was satisfied in different ways. In the first case, if you win for blowing everything away, in the first case, Lucy wanted to drive the vehicle herself but her overriding fidelity or commitment to safety was satisfied, was prioritized in the name of getting her home safely. So even though she wanted to be the one in control of the vehicle during the full ride, the vehicle said, well, Lucy, you also have this overarching commitment to safety and arriving home safely. And so we're gonna take over and steer around this accident. And Lucy was fine with that. In the second scenario, you can see that John's interest in getting home as quickly as possible, even to the detriment of the accident victims, was overridden by perhaps a legal requirement to render aid or just simply a social norm that we would help one another, especially if there were a, a terrible accident like this one. So there, there's the article. That's all the, uh, the uh, key concepts from the article. A couple of parting thoughts to think about. Number one is this is cast within the context of dual mode, mode vehicles, vehicles where you have some, some operator input and responsibility. But I think the same conclusions could apply and would apply to fully automated systems. If meaningful human control can be satisfied by pre-programming vehicles to balance all these various uh, reasons and, and prioritize them and whatnot, it could be done whether or not I think a human is directly involved at all. It could just be simply done ahead of time and a person could sit back and all that can be satisfied if their conclusions work. And a, a second thing to think about is that since engineers are able to pre-program vehicles and pre-prioritize these various values, I think this is going to force ethicists and philosophers and the legal system and society at large to answer some tough questions, some tough moral questions about whether we should prioritize the value of citizens that are younger or older or that pay more taxes or fewer taxes or have a criminal history or not. Because if it's the case that we know that a crash is either going to harm the occupants or some pedestrians or occupants in another vehicle, then we could tell the vehicle to either prioritize the safety of this party or that party. And if we know those details about those parties, whether they're old or they're young or they're this or they're that, then we could make those decisions ahead of time about which should be prioritized. Those are very tough questions. Uh, some tough questions that we've been able to avoid up until now, but since we can pre-program these cars, we'll have to answer those questions ahead of time. Thanks so much. Thanks so much to the authors for the very cool article. Hope you enjoy.